Hey guys, and welcome back to another video on my channel. Before we get into today's video, I do just need to give you guys a little bit of a warning. Today's video, we talk a lot about the incest and rape of young children. I don't really dive too deeply into the situations themselves. I very much so just am going to be brushing the surface, but if that is something that you don't think that you can handle, I highly recommend that you click out of this video and go check out another video on my channel or wait till Friday when there will be another video because this video is very, very disturbing. But anyways, with that all being said and with that warning out of the way, let's get right into today's video. On May 30th, 2012, a mother who was 19 years old by the name of Brittany Wood disappeared, last being seen in Mobile, Alabama. Now, when you first look at this case, you may think that this case is pretty much like every other missing person case. Of course, they are absolutely devastating, but in a lot of them, there isn't anything that really stands out. Of course, it's tragic that some is missing and we want to do everything we can to bring them home but as we dive deeper into today's case you are going to realize just how twisted and sickening this entire case actually is. What we need to start off first in this case is learning a little bit about Brittany Wood herself. So again, Brittany Wood was 19 years old and she was a single mother to her daughter who was two years old by the name of Peyton. A really important piece of information in this case is Brittany absolutely loved her daughter. Peyton was Brittany's entire world. However, Brittany had a severe drug problem and so because of this, her daughter Peyton was often left with her father. Brittany Wood was last seen on May 30th, 2012 in Mobile, Alabama. She had told loved ones that she was going to be getting a ride from her uncle, Donald Paul Holland Sr. He lived in the Sticks River area and he was going to, I believe, be picking her up and taking her out that way. And the two were last seen together when Donald came to pick Brittany up around 7.30 p.m. that evening. How Donald is related to Brittany is kind of important due to the circumstances of this case. So Donald was actually Brittany's mom's sister's husband. So he was Brittany's aunt, but there was no blood relation to him. Anyways, when Brittany didn't return home that evening, nobody really thought much of it. They thought that yes, she'd been out with Donald, but maybe she'd asked him to drop her off somewhere and she was now just on some kind of drug bender because that was something that Brittany was known to do quite often. But by June 2nd, when Brittany Woods still had not shown up back home, this is when family members and loved ones started to become a little bit more concerned. And her mom, I guess, was trying to call her or get into contact with her. And when she didn't see Brittany at that point, that is when she decided that it might be a good idea to get police involved. What makes this entire case that much more alarming is on June 1st, 2012, Donald, Brittany's uncle, who again was the last person to have seen Brittany before she vanished, was found dead in his car. It was suspected that Donald committed suicide at a river near his house that was very secluded, and in his vehicle with him at the time was Brittany's phone battery, as well as the gun that he had used to shoot himself in the head, which actually belonged to Brittany. After finding Donald deceased in his vehicle, the family started to get very concerned and they started to try and call Brittany constantly to just kind of inform her that her uncle had passed away. But at this time, still nobody could get a hold of her. And that is why her mom was becoming more increasingly alarmed. However, again, Brittany was young and she had a drug problem. And so because of this, Police did take her case a little bit seriously, but at this point they were quite confident that she was going to show up within a few days. Now this is where all of the really messed up and gut-wrenching parts of this case are going to start coming in. So when police started to really dig at Brittany's life and look at her background and everything like that, that is when they noticed that in 2005, Brittany was involved in a criminal investigation. Now she was not the criminal, but she was 12 years old and while at church, the pastor kind of pulled her aside because he started to notice that she was acting quite strange. She clearly had issues and there was clearly something wrong with Brittany in her life. So the youth pastor started to kind of question her, but she wouldn't really speak to him. So he gave her a pen and a pad and just told her to kind of draw how she felt. And that is when 12 year old Brittany drew a very, very vivid picture of a young child being molested by an adult. 
Now, immediately this youth pastor went to police and he said, listen, you gotta do something about this because this child clearly is disturbed and police immediately got involved. So they took Brittany to the side and they started to question her and that is when Brittany started to open up to the police that she had been being molested by her grandmother's boyfriend whose name is Ron. Now Ron had been in Brittany's life for her entire life. He basically raised her mother, however he was her step grandfather. And she had told police that he had been molesting her since she was nine years old. And while talking to Brittany, that is when they realized that this wasn't an isolated incident. This man, Ron, had been molesting Brittany over the years several times almost daily. The amount of times that Brittany had been assaulted by her grandmother's boyfriend was absolutely countless. So after this all came out to police, Ron was put on trial and in 2005 he was convicted of his crimes. Now you must be thinking that when the family found out about this and when Brittany's grandmother and her mother found out about this, they must have been absolutely horrified. However, that is not the case. They were not shocked at all, in fact, they all already knew that this was happening and they did not put a stop to it, they didn't fin it, like end it or do anything like that because they were all partaking in similar crimes. And as this case progresses, you're going to see just how sick and twisted this family is. And they didn't even put on a front for the media or anything like that. Brittany's grandmother continued a relationship with Ron and the rest of the family would call and visit him when they were allowed as if he had done absolutely nothing wrong. Police started to think that maybe Donald's case and Brittany's case could be connected when they started to look deeper and found that Donald was in under investigation and he was going to be talked to by police within the next couple of days following his suicide. And what he was going to be spoken to about and what he was being investigated for, as you have probably already guessed, was sex crimes against children. Now again, Donald's death was pretty quickly ruled a suicide. However, after they started to look more closely at this case, they started to think that maybe there was something a little bit suspicious about his death. Donald had shot himself in the head, or at least that was what was being speculated and still is kind of being speculated at this time, although that is what police believe. However, usually when someone decides to shoot themselves in the head as a method of suicide, they usually do it either in the front of the head or the side of the head. However, a bullet was found in the back of Donald's head behind his ear which isn't the kind of like generic way for somebody to shoot themselves in the head. It doesn't necessarily mean that he couldn't have done it himself, it just is not the generic way that people normally would do something like this. Because of all of the strange stuff that just kept coming out and surfacing in this case, police continued to dig into Donald's life. And that is when they found probably the most gut-wrenching thing of this entire case is that Donald would hold these barbecues and he would invite all of his family members and some of his close family friends and during these barbecues he would basically pimp out the young boys and girls in his family. Basically this barbecue was a sex trafficking ring for children and all of these people would come and kind of take their turn with the kids who were at this barbecue and most of these people were all related to the children that they were raping and molesting during this time. Involved in all of these horrendous acts were basically three families and all of these families were related. They just all had different last names because they were married under different last names. So the families who were all really involved in this were the Hollands, the Kents, and the Woods. And they would basically have these big huge barbecues where they would all come together and swap each other's children. Another important person in this case is a woman by the name of Wendy. Now Wendy was Brittany's mother's sister and she was Donald's wife. Now Donald and Wendy were always the ones to host these incest family party, really messed up, all of that kind of thing. And so they were kind of believed to be the ringleaders of all of this nasty stuff. So basically they all had kids and sometimes they were caught, you know, even assaulting their own children. They started to groom these kids as soon as they were born and then they would start raping them as early as the ages of three and four years old. So these children were assaulted almost on a daily basis by the people who were there to take care of them. 
Before the ages of three and four, the younger children, younger than three and four, as if three and four aren't still babies, were forced to watch the other children be raped and assaulted during these parties until the adults finally thought that these children were old enough to be partaking in all of these activities themselves. There was a total of 16 children who had been assaulted by all of these family members and that is just the ones who are known about. I'm sure there could be more. But yeah, a total of 16 children who had been assaulted by these adults during these family party things. What makes me so angry in this case and absolutely blows my mind is there was several complaints made against this entire family revolving around child abuse. However, all of these allegations were pretty much ignored except for the allegations that were made by Brittany against her grandmother's boyfriend, Ronald. Another thing that I want to kind of include here, although it is absolutely just disgusting, is all of the women who were involved in this case, so aunts, mothers, they were in charge of preparing the children for the men. So while the kids were babies, they would kind of get adult toys and begin to use them on the children. And something else to note here is that all of the women, so the aunts and the moms of these children who were now partaking in this kind of sex ring thing where they swapped their children around, were all also raped by Ron while they were young. Now, not that that makes anything okay, absolutely, obviously not, but they do say that if you are abused when you're a child, you are more likely to grow up and become an abuser. And I just can't even wrap my head around that because you would think that when you were abused when you were younger, you know what it's like so you wouldn't want to put your child or any other child in that kind of situation. But that is just what they say and clearly in this case there is some kind of truth to that because this entire family is so deprived and sick and I can't even wrap my head around this. So once this all started to come out, pretty much every single adult within this family was arrested for partaking in these weird incest sex parties with children. Another kind of interesting but really twisted part of this case is that Brittany actually had an older brother and her older brother was quoted saying that Donald was an absolutely horrible man, he even compared him to the devil and he said that Donald had been grooming him since he was the age of seven. But after he was done grooming him like that, he then went on to groom Brittany's brother to be a predator himself and Brittany's brother did grow up to be a predator. Up until this point in the case, many people did still did not believe that Britney's case was related to Donald's death, which I think is very, very naive because again, almost every single adult in Britney's family was now in jail. And it had started to come out at this time that people started coming forward to police that Donald had been showing them videotapes of Britney while she was very young in sexual acts with various family members who had been raping her and Donald was distributing these videos which definitely suggests that Donald had been making child pornography. Now whether he was doing this a lot or just a little bit is unknown. It isn't even came out publicly whether they had found large amounts of child videos or if they had just found a small amount of them but there definitely were some. So before we move on to the theories in this case, I do just want to tell you guys how long everybody in this case was sentenced in prison. And I do not believe that anybody in this case, besides Wendy, was sentenced long enough prison time. It is just absolutely mind-blowing how much you can get away with. I really don't know what the police were thinking, how the public feels about this, and why this case isn't more talked about because this is definitely wrong. These people should be in prison for life and many of these people are not. Wendy, again, who is Donald's wife and who was kind of like holding these barbecue things, was sentenced to 219 years in prison. She was charged with sodomy, incest, and sexual torture. Wendy's twin, who was also involved in all of this, only got 40 years in prison. One of the uncles had gotten as low as 17 years in prison and other families who had been arrested had been sentenced as youth because they had been abused when they were children, which is absolutely disgusting. 
And then there were three other family friends who weren't actually related but were involved in this and they were only sentenced to seven years in prison. Randall Wood, who is Britney's mom's brother, had only gotten as low as three years in prison. This is absolutely mind-blowing. How can people commit such heinous crimes and serve such a low time in prison when there are people serving life sentences for having possession of marijuana? What is going on in this case, in this world? I can't even wrap my head around that. What this all has to do is with the child pornography stuff is that it is widely speculated that the family had more child videos than they were leading on. Because this family was very, very low class. They had next to no money. But all of a sudden, every single one of the family members who were in prison could all of a sudden just afford their bail. So people believed that they were distributing these child videos and keeping that money and bailing themselves out of jail. And so the police in this case have come under a lot of suspicion because none of this makes sense and it all just seems extremely, extremely odd. Other things that are important in this case is that Britney's mother was given a lot of sympathy at the beginning of this case. People felt really bad for her thinking that maybe she didn't know any of this was going on or that she had been so severely abused that she couldn't have done anything about it. But it later came out that Britney's mother was involved in all of this. However, she completely denies that and says that they're just trying to paint her in a bad light because they can't figure out basically what happened to her daughter. Another important piece of information in this case is Britney's parents have pretty much been divorced since Britney was born and her father's family had no idea that any of this was going on. However, her father's family does say say that in the little while before Britney vanished, she was very outspoken about what was going on in her mother's side of the family, and she was not going to put up with it anymore. She wanted to put a stop to all of these years of abuse. She wanted to do something, and she was going to be the one to fix it and get all of these children out of harm's way. Again, at this time before Donald was found deceased in his vehicle, he was under investigation. However, Britney's father's side of the family believed that Britney could have possibly wanted to confront Donald herself because three days before Britney had vanished, she had received a Facebook message from one of her young cousins and this cousin was basically telling Britney how she had been abused by three male members of the family and one of these members was Donald himself. Police would have wanted to talk to Brittany after they had spoken to Donald and they did plan to do so before Brittany had vanished and before Donald had passed away. And it is widely believed that Brittany would have had enough information and enough proof to put every single one of these family members in jail for a very, very, very long time. So let's talk a little bit about the theories of what people believe could have possibly happened in this case. Now, a little bit of important information that we all have to remember is that the gun that was found in Donald's vehicle after he had committed suicide did belong to Brittany Wood. So the most widely speculated theory in this case is that Brittany had gone to confront Donald about all of this. She told him she was going to the police and that he was going to be spending the rest of his life in prison with the rest of the adult family members within this family and that somehow she had really rallied Donald up and he was extremely angry and that is when he killed Brittany. Many people believe that maybe he got his other family members involved and they all helped dispose of Britney's body. It is then suspected that Donald had killed himself to avoid prison time and that he had possibly used Britney's gun in hopes of framing her so that the police would be looking for her as a killer instead of as a victim. Another theory in this case is that maybe Britney had murdered Donald and then fled and is hiding out somewhere now. A lot of people have a problem with this theory because again, Britney had a very young daughter and her daughter was her entire world. But some people back this theory up by saying Britney was going through a really hard time at this time and her daughter had already been being taken care of by Peyton's father, the daughter's father. And so she had already known that Peyton was in good hands. She wasn't being left with this horrible family. And people believe that maybe Brittany just thought that if she killed Donald, that would put an end to all of this because he did seem to kind of be the ringleader of all of this absolutely disgusting stuff. And the last theory in this case that I'm going to talk about is that Wendy, Donald's wife, murdered both Brittany and Donald. 
Now, this theory, I don't really understand. It doesn't really make sense to me, but I think that the consensus of this theory was that Brittany had a lot of information about what had been going on, and Donald obviously would have been the main person that the police would have wanted, and they thought that, I guess, maybe Wendy would have thought that Donald would have thrown her out of the bus to kind of get himself out of this big mess, so she thought that it would be best to kill them both. However, she still ended up in prison for 219 years, so I really don't understand this specific theory, but it is a theory in this case. Regardless of what theory you believe in this case or what you think really happened, the downright facts in today's topic are absolutely gut-wrenching. This case took me so long to research because I kept having to stop because it made me so, so sick to imagine all of the trauma that this entire family was enduring on the children who were related to them in this family who they should have been protecting. This case is one of the most messed up cases I have ever covered in my entire life and I am absolutely shocked that this case isn't more spoken about. I had never heard of it until somebody had requested it and when I started to look into it I was even questioning if I wanted to talk about it because it is so absolutely disgusting. I do apologize for bringing you guys such a nasty sickening video today but that is all that I have for you in today's video. If you like this video please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to comment down below what you'd like to see in my future videos and don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so that you don't miss any future videos from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll See you in the next one. Bye, guys.